T Rexes have a serious problem with their tiny arms, but but once they once they manage to get anything in their mouth, I've I've been to the Natural History Museum, stood next to a, a T Rex skull, <laughs> and T Rex skulls are sort hold of on, hold on, hold on. There you go. T Rex skulls are <laughs> <laughs> this big. <laughs> They're just unbelievably huge. Oh, um, part, part and Pay has just, just realized that that's an indoor tile. It is indeed an indoor tile. That this is an, in, that is an indoor uh, tile, yes, that's right. Now, where did the name for this indoor tile come from, actually? Because the name's not in the books, I don't think, for the tavern itself. Did you come up with the name? Was it one of the it other guys? It was one of Mark's. No, it was one was of it one of Mark's? Yeah, I think so. If it's not in the books, it's one of Mark's. I can't remember whether it turns up later or not. I quite liked it. The, I think it, it's wasn't really the, fitting. It wasn't the gun wheel. What was it? It was. Was it the gunwheel? Yes, yeah, I, think it was, I, uh, I, I really quite enjoyed it actually. Or gunnels, as they say. The gunnels. Is that what the locals call it? That's what the the sailors would have called it. The gunnels. No, okay. no self-respecting seventeenth century sailor would have called it a gunwale. <laughs> oh, marks, marks you out as a I, land I feel and really, I feel no really mistake. bad now. Um, okay, so shall we chat a little bit about for anyone that hasn't seen the gameplay a little bit about what what this no, no, scenario no, no, is? No. You started gunnels. That's the phrase "full to the gunnels." Full to the gills. Full to the gunnels means full to the, the gunwales means your entire ship is full up and there's no room otherwise it's going to fall off the side. Full to gunnels. There you go. I, I didn't realise that was a new point of etymology. Um, Fifty minutes to the last. Sorry. Bit of the last anyway, you, you were I, going to say something relevant. Uh, I interrupted you with my nonsense. Yes, I. Well, <laughs> I, it's less nonsense as more knowledge that I feel like as that knowledge comes in. Some other important bit of knowledge, like <laughs> how to breathe, goes out. Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> I, if you ask me, ask me in a week's time after the Kickstarter is done what, what fill to the gunnels means I and think, see if I can tell you. I was going to say, I think you'll find that much of the things that happen during, during the, the Kickstarter, Kickstarter are just sort of lost in a blur. <laughs> We're just blacked out for event, 24 days. After the event, just, yeah, uh, that's right. Oh my God. So... Chat are going mad with dinosaurs and Alice in Wonderland meeting Solomon Kane. You guys are nuts. Right. We'll chat a bit about the board and about anyone who hasn't watched the, the playthrough yet because it only went up this morning. What we have here is the gun wheel, or the, the gunnel. Is it? It's, it's, a, it's a pub. It's a pub. It's a tavern. It's, it's a, a tavern. surprisingly dangerous tavern, actually. Mm. Um, that's one of the potential opening paths that you can choose when you go through yeah. Blue Frame So this is actually chapter two. You have yeah. to actually make a decision in chapter one that says whether you come here at all. Basically, at the beginning of, of uh, Blue Flame, Solomon is watching this ship offshore that he thinks is the, the pirate ship of someone he's been chasing for years. And he's not 100% sure, but he reckons this is, this is the, he's finally in the right place at the right time, and he'll, he'll have him this time. Meanwhile, the uh, the young naive hero, yeah, yeah. Um, Jack is is having a fight for his his lady's honour mm -hmm. against the Mr. rather unscrupulous and unpleasant Mr. Jack, who uh, you're familiar with, local bigwig, um, and so Kane sees this as well while he's sitting on the dunes and um, realizes as Jack leaves that some of Banway's men are following him, and being a bit of a young hothead. Jack probably hasn't noticed, and he's going to get himself into some serious trouble. So Solomon Cain has a, has a choice, and obviously you, as the virtues, have to make that choice for him. Does he go and follow Jack and the, the chaps that Banway sc sent skulking off after him to try and keep this innocent? Because although he's a, a sword fighter and a bloke and all the rest, he's still innocent. So just, I'll just interrupt for a quick second. So yes, this is Jack Hollister, guys. So this is the, the, the beloved the young, of, of, the of Mary. Um, and this is Jonas Hardrecker, also known as the Fishhawk. And this is the person that Solomon has a real grudge with over some stuff that the Fishhawk has done in the past. And this is the choice you have to make immediately at the start. Uh, it's not Sam Duflar. This is definitely Jack. Definitely no, Jack. Not. Oh, sorry. You're right. You're right. This is Sam. It is. Oh. I always Sam and Jonas. He's uh, he's he's in disguise. He's very difficult. This is why he's so hard to track. That's why Solomon's been trying. Are to Are we find sure him. this is Sam? Well, that's the thing. Are we sure that this is Sam? No, this is this is Jonas. No, no, I'm going to fight on this. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm going to I'm going to fight you. Jake's going to continue telling the story as I go and quickly research. Sam says, anyway, "Oh no." Anyway, so you have you have a choice, and this is a this is a genuine. Do you go left or right? Choice. This is not a test. This is 
just a choice that you get to make as the players. Does Solomon Cain go and set off after Jack to try and save him from any mischief that Banway sets on him? Or do you go down the docks and try and find out what's happening with Fishhawk and if anyone knows anything about where he is and where he's docked or if he's come ashore and then chase down this oh murderer. God and dang it, it's absolutely sad. It is, yes. I just wanted you to <laughs> prove that to yourself. I forgot because Cap well, this, this has the double. This is your T-Rex thing, isn't it? This is your T-Rex This is, thing. I wish I had more room to flail. <laughs> I don't want to look back at the comments. I'm going to open the comments again. <laughs> and here I go. Oh, God. Ah, oh, vengeance. Men will die for this. That's all I'm going to say. Ah, oh. Men will die for this. Such a good <sighs> phrase. Anyway, so you have to pick. Do you go after the, the pirate you've been searching for for years? Do you go to help the innocent you met five minutes ago? Tricky. Yep. And whichever one you do will change the rest of the story. The whole rest mm -hmm. of that act. Now, it doesn't change what's happening in the world. Because, no, of course, what, no, the no, plots are all there. Fishhawk's still doing what Fishhawk's doing. Yeah. Banway's still doing what Banway's doing. You know, the, that kind of overarching story is still happening in the background. It's but how, how you come you about interact, it, how you get involved, how you... How you it, yeah. But also, I mean, some of these choices, not necessarily in this one, but mm -hmm. in this kind of choice in other scenarios... And in, in generally, in, in, other, um, sorry, in other adventures, and in, in this kind of, um, the outcomes of chapters in general mm -hmm. uh, can have characters dying. And therefore, once they're dead, they're no longer in anything that happens after that. And so that obviously majorly affects... Until we put that necromancer mini in that we've been waiting to put in. Well, he's in the... <laughs> <laughs> he is, of course, he's in the right hand of doom, yeah. And he gets hung, so that's not really very helpful. No, that's true. That's true. Very early. <laughs> he's, not very that, yeah. he's not very helpful, Necromancer. Um, she gets dead too quick. So to give you guys an example of kind of how you may interact in different ways with the plot and the story that's happening in the world around Solomon, you may only get little snippets of information that are going to help you guys decide where you're going to go. So on the board, when we're looking at the tavern, we have a number of different characters. Mm -hmm. Shall we chat a bit about? I'm going to pick one. Pick one, and we'll have a chat about them. Uh, there's one in particular that I ended up loving. Uh, that's this one? Yeah, okay. No, this one. So yeah, yeah, let's bring her down. So this is... The serving girl. Yeah, the serving girl, or the waitress, or oh, as, as, Babis, as Babis calls her, calling this? A, a, pet, a pretty wench with a charming smile who offers Solomon a tankard of grog as he approaches. And she has her own unique card, specific for this chapter, that's going to tell you what happens when you interact with her and what potential outcomes you have, depending on how well you interact with her. Uh, as his beer mug, yeah, that's a good size of tankard, isn't it? Isn't that a good size? It is a bit. It's kind of, it's actually a jug, is it a jug or, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like a filling jug. I could have that as my own tankard though, I think. Um, <laughs> I'm getting a bit of a reputation. Yeah, I like the turkey. Our ambassadors have been asking that we replace the turkey with a, a tray of uh, Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what backers would think about that though. I think it's kind of a bit, a bit out of place. But the idea is that whenever you chat to the waitress, she's going to give you some grog, which I'll get in a second actually, and then she's going to give you one of four potential outcomes. Well, three potential outcomes, but one actually doubles up. And that is a choice you'll have to make whenever you come into this scene and you have, how many different characters you can interact with in this scene? One, Six, two, five? Three, four, five? Five. Five. And the positions of them will be randomized at the start. So every time you come into the tavern, if you play this over and over again, you're not necessarily gonna have direct lines to all of them immediately. Let me grab the, the girl. Or if you do, you're gonna have to walk past one to go and meet the other. And um, so for example, if you talk to the waitress, she's gonna give you this up. A card, now this will have more text on it in the final version, but it gives you with a wry smile, the waitress hands Solomon a tankard of grog. And before making a talk test, you can discard this card to get two bonus to your talk. However, you lose a clarity. You're going to get yourself a little bit uh, a little slurry. Bit I just noticed that. What have you just noticed? Have you just seen something on the base? Yeah. It's a wee dead fish. It's, it's, a, it's, Are a, we it's a, somebody's, <laughs> somebody's eating their fish. It's the end of someone's fish and chips. Jake has just noticed that on the bar. The end of someone's fish and chips, yeah. He actually has. Not only is he spilling some of his eel in front of him, but he also has something that looks like maybe a dog has been gnawing on. A little fish. A fish bones. Absolutely. I've, I've never noticed that before either, actually. <laughs> Uh, now we need a cat as well, says Mark. What do you get? You guys are obsessed with giving Solomon Cain cats and dogs and companions and Tamagotchis. Tamagotchis were really big in the 16th century. I remember being young. I, I, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> every time I got to his right. move for him. So when Absolutely I first everywhere. entered this scene, it was actually laid out slightly differently, but when I first entered this, I was thinking, okay, pirates, we want to find out about the fishhawk. I want to go straight to the swashbuckler. But we found out some amazing tidbits from the waitress that completely sidelined me. So the one in particular that absolutely nailed me to the wall, and I couldn't believe this, it really, really, really made my day. So we had the old lady and the, the gossiping waitress. Um, so we had the old lady sitting by the table beside the entrance as Solomon eyes the tavern. She averts her gaze. She's tense, yet she tries to hide it unsuccessfully. And Solomon may, uh, sorry, Solomon is drawn to her shady facade and may ask her about any rumours she may have heard. And the waitress daubed her in completely whenever we spoke to her and said, actually, she's not an innocent old lady at all. Last time I played, we were talking to the barkeeper Mm -hmm. And he says, I don't like the old lady. If you get her to go away, I'll tell you something secret. Really? Yeah. We didn't get that path at so all. We, so, we, so we were like, and I was just like, oh, old lady, go on, sling her up. <laughs> One of the, I thought, I thought the, uh, the barkeep would know, because, you know, so you know think, everybody, you know. It, and never the, mind going to talk, talk to the shady, shady dodgy yeah. sword, swordsmith. Now let's see uh, if sorry, I can. Sword fighter. I mean, it's like, is he going to tell you, you know, oh, I'm a pirate? I, uh, nah. I, I, sh I should, I, I, it's, well, it's terrible, it's terrible <laughs> to go into the discovery cards because we have a, a bunch of story that essentially you unravel each time you play. Um, and we only saw maybe about a quarter of it whenever we played the initial couple there's of not, chapters. There's not enough time in, in one playthrough to see anything like all of the different options you can get. Yeah. So that means you can definitely play this repeatedly. So the waitress told, <laughs> told us this. So she looks behind her shoulder at the old lady. Lucrezia baits a vile harridan. She doesn't mention much other than the old crone's involvement with the local market. Apparently she's a front woman of a local weapon smuggling cartel. I, this, this actually blew my mind, blew my mind. Um, and and I, I immediately completely forgot about the, the kid and, and his story about his father and the barkeep. I forgot about the swashbuckler. I was like, we need to pursue this. I need to find out where this is going because- But that's the fun bit, isn't it? Yeah. Um, attached to, so what you mean by that, Mark, when you say attached to the old lady, is the old lady uh, has initially one type of interaction that you can do with her. So you may talk yeah, to her. Yeah. Each, each of the characters, the five characters, has a starting card that sits beside the board and that gives you a limited, the most obvious thing you can do when you interact with them. And as you talk to other people, they tell you things that, you know, oh, you should ask so-and-so about this, you should ask them about yeah. that, or tell them that you know about, you know, their secret with, and then it gives you another thing, you, and you put the card underneath to show that you, you, you can add to that number of topics. Basically, it's a list of topics you can discuss with them, yeah. and you, th this can expand during the game. So. There's uh, at least two or yep. three times as many things as you'll ever get to see in one go. Now, we did get a little bit lucky because I was playing Justice and both myself and Babis decided with our starting hands that we would um, try and get our, our virtues on the board okay. early. Just so we had that option available if we, if we felt we got stuck and to give Solomon the time to move freely around the board. Yep. What ended up happening is this one in particular... I'll show this card again a little bit in more detail. So this is the extra storyline that we basically got with the, the old lady. And it says the nature of her visits, if we ask her about those, we actually get a bonus if justice is spawned on the board because it's relevant to gun running and to the cartel or to something going on. And having justice there was going to give us the ability to be a little bit more scrutinous whenever we were kind of questioning her. And we had her on the board, which meant this was not only enticing from a thematic and me wanting to know the story, but also strategically we were in a good position to make that happen. What I need to find out now, hold on, I need to, I need to look at the way, I'm, I'm totally, you totally cheating. Oh, what, no, but we did, we, did get one, we did get one more, right? I'm terrible. Like if I played solo play games, I would be the absolute worst, right? Um, what was it? 218? I'm just cheating. I'm just absolutely cheating now. Um, Oh no, see, the, yeah, because the lady had another, the, ah, la the lady ah, had ah. another chain. So we went to her thinking, she's fronting a gun cartel. Like, she, we could maybe get yeah, some weapons. She, else, she yeah. might be trading to the pirates. She might be engaged in, we, you know, she might be a key source of information that we can squeeze to get some details from. So we went straight to her, justice in tow, and this happened. 
<laughs> she looks around as she beckons Cain closer. According to her, she's being extorted by a smuggling cartel to spy on a specific pirate ship. She can get, divulge more information if Solomon is willing to help her. So now, we've got a waitress saying she's dodgy. She's now telling us actually... Bar, Bar keeps saying chuck her out, she's a pain in the bum. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Solomon doesn't attack old ladies. You're very, very right, Marco. But he does, he does bring justice. And if she was doing something naughty, he would ensure that She's it a was gun resolved. Runner. She's a gun runner. And that that just changed the whole thing, to me. And it made me it made what I thought was going to become Solomon dealing with a side kind of issue as well as the main quest. It all of a sudden tied into the main one and became even more interesting. Yep. And that was one potential path for one potential character in one potential chapter mm -hmm. from this adventure, from this act. Yes. It blew so me people, away. When people say, where's the replayability? This is why we find it sort of troublesome. Mm. They can't yeah. see because there's enormous amounts of replay. I mean, this is just one chapter, as you say, one of about 25, 30 mm. chapters in this yeah. act. Um, and people were asking, just as a quick thing, this is a prototype board that you see in front of you. So yes. this is a representation of what will be four tiles. So a tile will be 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres, and it'll make up one quarter of this board. This itself, full disclosure, is actually one board. <laughs> we've actually is, had this yeah, made up as one. We've we made this up as one because it's easy for demonstrating, yeah. and, and it means that it doesn't move around if we start poking it and, and so on. But this is, just, this is all mock-up. Yeah, so this, this is purely, the, the tiles are also not final. Something that came up was, was something you've maybe never seen before when we've discussed the gameplay is uh, points of interest for characters, things that they actually have to interact with. So for example, on this one, we have four tables that will be um, marked a little bit more clearly in the final version, but these are um, obstructions that you can't move through. Yeah. But more importantly than that, the tavern uh, waitress actually moves to and from the tables yeah, as they're her objectives. Yeah, she's serving people, so she moves around the tables yeah. to, to use her jug of ale to yeah. refill, refill pots. So to expand that out, I mean, can you give any other examples of where you might see that kind of sentry moving around to interest? Well, sentries. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sentries, obviously, yeah, yeah. there are various uh, various times when Solomon trying to sneak past sentries to get into places that are defended, um, and that kind of thing. So you have sentries sort of patrolling around a certain area, yeah. and they follow the same idea of points of interest that they, they go from one to another. But you can also use the same mechanics if you have somebody who is simply going from one place to the other, then he just goes to that one. Yeah. We only, if they only have one point of interest, they simply keep mm -hmm. heading in that direction. Yeah. So you can use the same mechanics in a number of different so ways. So you could have Solomon chasing somebody while other people kind of get between away. him right. and, yeah, and right. his target. And then you could have a board which was, say, four in a row, rather yeah. than, you know, four tiles in a line rather mm -hmm. than two by two. Yeah. And then you know, they're trying to get to the end and you're trying to catch them, but you've got other guys in the way ambushing you as you go mm -hmm. along and all the rest of it. Yeah. So there's plenty of, um, yes, plenty of ways you can, you can play can with I, that. Can I tell the guys a little bit about what's been worked on at the moment um, by the, the game devs, what they're... What next little adventure they're kind of bringing together. Can I tell them? Yeah, go for yeah. it. So as you guys might have seen with Trick Track and Beast of War and also our ambassador demos, we had an earlier version of Solomon Cain from uh, a little while back now um, that we did Skulls in the Stars with. So that's the story of Solomon um, being told by the village boy not to go through uh, the moors because they're so dangerous. There's something happening and he, he meets a terrifying ghost and tries to save uh, a bestrag uh, endangered uh, traveler, wayfarer. Um, so we have now, we're now working at taking that and bringing it up to speed with all the latest rules that Jeff's been writing. Um, so we're going to look to, we're going to probably film that in the not too distant future. So as soon as we can, we'll look to do that for you. But also if you're going to come to Warbor on the 14th, we will hope to have it there as well to demonstrate it to everyone too. So with this? Yeah, with these brand new elements that you're starting to see. So. All your feedback you guys have been giving us on the Kickstarter comments, all the, the intriguing things, the little things you've been putting on the rule books, we're listening to them all. Um, it's having a huge effect on the game development that's happening every single day. So we really appreciate you guys kind of just coming on this journey with us as we kind of refine and, and tweak everything to get it just where we want it to be. Um, ooh, you want to talk a little, you want to look at, you want to explore one of the other characters? I'm, I kind I'm, of do, I'm but. Just, just looking at the, the toys. You don't get you don't get enough time to play with. The I toys, don't get enough actually. time to play with the toys. It's unusual for me to just be sitting here with with them all in front of me. To play um, with. I will say very quickly, Gabriel, uh, the War War event is just like a, a little takeover. It's not quite the same as a Mythic Games Day or anything like Mythic Day or anything like that. No. Um, but I'm hoping that we'll have at least this and the Skulls and Stars at least those two definitely playable alongside some Joan of Arc demos as well. 
Um, how many acts? Yeah, it'll be those, it'll be those two uh, demo acts, basically. I don't believe we'll they're have any full, full They're not full acts, products. no, because they, we want to have more people taste the game, as it were, so it's a... Right, do you know what? What I'm going to do, let's do a mock um, interrogation with the group. Let's do a, let's tr talk to somebody as if the people were playing at home and follow a narrative path. Okay. Yeah? So what I want you all to do in the comments, I'm going to pull forward all the characters. I'm not, I'm not going to use the, uh, the waitress because we've already kind of gone down one of her paths initially. So that actually, we'll pick between the three, the three gentlemen of the bar. <coughs> so here's your choice, chat. Would you like to chat to the swashbuckler, to the boy, or to the tavern keep? We're going to, we're going to engage in one of them, and we're going to see what happens if it was a success or fail. Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Should we actually do the tests as well, or no, should we just we'll, say they we'll, succeed? We'll, let's, let's give them a. <coughs> let's ask them. Okay. Let's ask the guys which. Who, so who do you want to speak to? Boy, tavern keeper, swash. Oh man, there's no one. No one is actually. <laughs> tavern keeper always knows it better. <coughs> Swashbuckler, boy. Oh come on, we're gonna have to get a consensus here. Do you know what I'll do very quickly? Let me get a straw poll. Let's. Uh, this will not work very well for guys watching on YouTube later. Sorry, guys on YouTube, but. Well, uh, let's make a straw poll. So we've got the boy. Who shall we talk to? I'll do the boy. Do the swashbuckler. I'll do the tavern keeper. Um, <laughs> let's not let's not allow uh, multiple answers. <laughs> That's not going to help. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to get I'm going to create a little poll. I'm going to link it to you guys now, and I'm going to get you guys all to vote on who we should talk to. Let's do this. There we go. Pure, pure fair. Uh, I'm going to give it, let's say, 30 seconds to a minute. Give everyone a chance to. Mark is going to be raging that he's away role playing now. He's going to be watching this tomorrow going, why wasn't I here for this? I want to know the stories. He's going to be so mad. Um, do we, will we have a vote or will we just look at the results? Well, let's just look at the results, see what we get. OK. Boy, seven, oh, six, that's, six, that's eight. Oh, it's tight. It's so. It's, it's so such close. a tight Bend split. Neck and neck. Oh my word! <clears throat> Eight seven seven. Boy is currently ahead. So classy as what a man. It's one thing I am. It is not classy. <laughs> Nine seven eight. Very oh close. guys. Very close. Okay, I'm Boys gonna I'm gonna have to. Buy a nose. I'm gonna have to do a countdown in a second. Okay. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, so close to <laughs> one. It's the boy. Okay. It's the boy. It's the boy. Nine to eight to seven. Wow, that was tight. The boy wins. Okay. Just. I'm going to keep that open because we might, we might do another straw poll. So I need the boy's card, which is here. You got it. Um, okay. So we're going to chat to the boy. So a silent boy sits by the table near the fireplace. He clutches a closed envelope in his hand tightly, giving cautious looks all around him. Solomon may ask the boy about the envelope. Not an envelope. When you make a talk test, if your result is up to three, four or five, or six plus, there we go. Yeah, we hope he would put his weapon down a little. Because <laughs> yeah, uh, otherwise he's gonna miss him completely. Yeah, he's <laughs> Oh no, my worst, my worst nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> so how are we going to decide uh, which well, outcome we get? Shall why we? Don't we ask. Okay, which outcome would you like, guys? I'm not going to do a straw poll. Just see which one comes up. So you have, we'll say D20, D19, low, or low D08. Me, low, medium, or high, or D20, two, three, five. I recommend one of these. Three, two, three. Two, you can go to two, three, five if you want, but this means you've done very poorly in yeah. talking to the boy. Very badly at the bottom. Pretty well at the top. 219, two, everyone, how, what a nice group of people. They're all saying, let's just go medium. Let's, oh, yes, medium. Okay, it looks pretty consensus, actually, that medium, that 219 is going to be the result. Okay. Okay, so 219. So you guys can play along at home. I'll flip this. There you go, 219. Here we go. Oh, no. The kid Oops. doesn't say much. <laughs> Eyeing Solomon in suspicion. No sooner than later, the waitress is by his side. Is there a problem? She asked of the Puritan. <laughs> As he backs away, he feels all eyes on him, plus one to danger. Guys, you can't just walk up to a kid and start questioning him casually. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, we can't, we can't end it there, can we? 
let's let's assume let's assume you did a bit better. You you, you got a really nice result. You you. So two oh eight, guys. What did I put two eight here? Where have I put two oh eight? Two eighteen. Uh, oh, oh no, hold on. I've 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 put some. Oh, I've deordered. Here we go. Have you? I just put them in order. Yeah, I know. And I've I've just put <laughs> some on top and messed up. That worked out well, says Freddie. Yes, you can when you're a Puritan. Yes. Yeah, but when you're wearing a big when you like yeah, black when you're a coat and six foot six black clad stranger who just walks heavily armed up to the little boy in the corner and starts looming over him. Someone already had the eyes on him as he walked into the tavern. So it's of course, to, everybody's going to go. Who's that? Okay, so here we go. If we had done a little better. So the kid ooh, hides the envelope behind his back, nervously smiles at Solomon and introduces himself as Timmy. He claims to be the waitress's son and here all the time to keep her company. Timmy further mentions that the barkeep looks after him and his ma until his father returns ashore. Attaches to the barkeep and when you make a talk test, you may ask about his connection with Timmy's father. And noticeably, interestingly about this particular avenue of conversation is when you do the talk the current danger level will modify your ability to interact with the barkeep so the more rattled or the more stuff going on in the tavern or the more dangerous well, the it more, is the more talk. everybody's on edge of just taking this stranger out and lynching him yeah <laughs> um the less the less helpful everyone starts being basically um so, so but but the barkeep would be more helpful in this case is well, that right? which tells you something. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> Craig Patterson says, I have no sound at all, so all I see is a man threatening a boy with a gun. Yeah, that's about it. That's about yeah. That's right. about right. Shall we, yeah. shall we see where the barkeep's conversation path goes? We've got to do one more, right? We've got to give them one more teaser. No? How much of this do you want to spoil? One more. One more. Let's, okay, barkeep, do you, want to, do you want to ask the barkeep about Timmy's dad? Yes or no, group? I know what's going to come back as the answer. Um, I'm pretty sure I can guess. Yep, yep. No, says Louis. Yes, this well, well, Louis, do it. close your ears. Close your ears, your eyes. We need Solomon Kane with the Juju staff. Clint Lee Werner. I agree. We do need Solomon Kane with the Juju staff. That, yeah. Uh, Who knows? Timmy, I'm your father. Go on what then, says Ian. Happen? Shoot something, says Mark. We could, we could. I've probably forgotten in a year, so yes. <laughs> Ever the realist in the group. That's a great, great answer. Okay, go on then. So, chatting to the tavern keep. So this would get added to the barkeep's hand. Let me. Where is the barkeep? Here he is. So we would have the original conversation option with the barkeep, where we would essentially be able to talk to him and just ask him about how business is going. I'll move this a bit over. There we go. So this was the initial barkeep card. But having had the conversation we had with Timmy, we now have a second option. So if we want to, we can talk about his connection with Timmy's father. Want to do that? I assume you guys I do. Think we do, yes. I what option we do. do we want? 215 or 234? So you've only got two options this time. So normally uh, you do a test for this. This is just for, for speed. We'll yes, pick an answer. 234 says Mark, 234 or two. Oh, they all just want the goods uh, they now. They just want well. the goods now. They don't want the danger going up. They don't no. want to be chucked out for being a Peter. <laughs> 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 bad, bad man, two, three, four. Okay, uh, two, three, four. pretty, pretty good consensus on that one. I feel that one's somewhere in this. Oh, Cinderus wants two fifteen. Oh, maybe we should go back to two fifteen then. No, no. Uh, <laughs> no. that's been contrary. We I mean. smart, huh? Okay, this is a good way to show. So, what would then happen? The stocky man eyes Solomon suspiciously. Apparently, he and Timmy's father belonged in the same gang. Now he seeks to repay his old friend by letting his son's mother serve some drinks while she keeps the child under his watchful eyes. He motions Solomon King closer and offers some extra information about his friend's involvement with the pirates. We would get a couple of things. We would get plus one, what we're calling currently purity, or victory points towards mm -hmm. the next yeah. chapter. We would get plus one clarity, because we've got some uh, additional information and a bit more clear of mind of what's going on with the pirates. And then we'd also remove 208, which means we've basically completed this avenue of conversation and we would remove the previous card um, from play. So the barkeep would go back to his original state. Yep. That is just one little sample of how you would start to work your way towards having a positive outcome from the story by gathering this intelligence so you're able to go and get Fishhawk. And that's because you chose to go and get information, get fish to go yeah. and get fish hawk. Go and find out about fish hawk. Um, you could have gone to help Jack. And then you wouldn't be doing any of this. And you wouldn't be doing it. No, you'd, you'd be going down a completely different path dealing with whatever happens to Jack. 
<laughs> Hard. Whenever I asked Babas and Dio, they were there. Those guys are not romantic at all. They were both just like, nah, he's fine. Whatever. Like, he <laughs> he's, was, a, he's a big boy. He'll he can cope. walk He'll home himself. He was just <laughs> sword fighting. He's fine. Um, so that would give you just now. I'll show you the chapter card. Have you got? I have it here actually. Sorry. There we go. So to give you an example of what those purity points or victory points currently mean, the stars. These are the stars. Yeah, at the bottom. And you getting one counts towards what you're hoping to get four to go to 3A, one or two to go to 3B, or if you don't manage to do very well or something else horrendous might happen, you would then go to 3C. Um, other is always a bit daunting to me. <laughs> other, other, uh, yeah, other is a bit of a catch-all, and it's usually not a good one. Yeah. You have drunk one too many grogs and have just well, capsized. Yeah, many bad things have happened. And What about three stars? Other. Three stars is other. I think we need to. I think that's a wee tweak, actually. Maybe is that a wee tweak? That's uh, probably that's a, a wee tweak is needed there on that, actually. <laughs> well, actually, no, not necessarily. Oh, I don't know what chapter three. Oh I'm, no, I, I do you know what chapter three C is. Actually, no, I actually think that might be right. I don't want to. Yeah, because it's it's dead bad. <laughs> See, the points you get from completely exploring conversations and finding information aren't always one. Sometimes it's two. So depending on the combinations you get, you might have different things. I think three is pretty. Three is a pretty bad number. <laughs> says Sindras. Um, well, I don't know if that's like, final. We need to we need to check that. We'll but never know. But I think I almost <laughs> want to leave that in now. So if you finish on three, you're just at that. Well, they're, they're all different. I mean, this is the thing: is that there's not a standard. Um, answer yep. they're all done bespoke for mm -hmm. that chapter card so that it leads in the different combinations mm -hmm. of places it could go um, cool. and I can't remember offhand wh whether that's right or not because so you're there's, you're already like two stories there ahead are, in terms of there are 30 something acts with 10 chapters in each act and each chapter has more than one version so there are I hate to think how many. <laughs> Mark says, write it down. You should see the spreadsheets. You should see them. Oh, boy. It's all written down. Uh, it's just not all in my head. <laughs> so that gives you guys a little taste for what um, you might see with a scene like this, where you're having to do something that's not killing. You're having not to do something that's not running away or escaping. You're actually having to engage with people a different way, all the while managing the shadows, of course, because these are according to that's me. That's right. The shadows are... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, the shadows are, are still there. The shadow, the the threat and the unpleasantness, the the impending danger from the darkness doesn't stop. Doesn't care whether you're fighting or talking or negotiating the price of bananas or whatever. I mean, it, it's just <laughs> not interested. It's still trying to get you. So uh, that's why the virtues have always got their job of kind of running interference for Solomon and trying to just keep the the the, the uh, shadows at bay. And yes. But one of the things that's interesting is we, we have a game that has got talking as one mm -hmm. of the things you do in yep. it, and that doesn't sound very rock and roll. It's not terribly exciting and amazing, <laughs> except it is when you're talking about stories, when you want to develop story yep. and character and find these little puzzles and, and adventures, sort of sub-adventures mm -hmm. almost within the, within the context of a single we have try and find out. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, of course, when you've got a fight, that's a different kind of different kind of uh, game completely. Mm -hmm. And when you've got you know pursuit or a flight or whatever, it's different again. Yeah. The idea being that you want to just try and explore the, all the different ways in which Solomon Cain gets into trouble and then gets out of it again. And each of the virtues is better or worse at, at, at different aspects. Yeah, they're all useful in some place. Gabriel says that the single movie scene close-up structure of each chapter is so cool. And Craig agreed. Thank you. Yes. yes. I mean, that's, that's how I kind of think of it. As a, they're called scenes because I think like a movie scene. That's yeah. how I, I mm -hmm. think of them always. Um, so I kind of think of them as a, as a weird hybrid of the story chapters. I think of as like a, a linking part mm -hmm. when, when in, a, in a novel before, yeah. between the, the main, main scraps or whatever. But the, the scenes I very much think of as... as for anyone that's Filmic. watched whenever we played, one question from in the comments I thought I'd bring up here and answer a little bit was we actually let the danger get quite high. The danger did start to ramp up because we yep. did spend a lot of time moving and going and talking to people rather than dealing with the shadows. We, we allocated just our left, resources. Yeah, you just left the shadows. To yeah, we, we let them just kind of come at us. Um, and people are asking, well, what happens if you've got 10 chapters to play through and your danger is ramping up? Those story points are where you're going to have the chance to kind of yeah. recuperate, reset. That's right. I mean, it, it, each chapter can have a modifier to tracks on it. 
and if you've been doing and, and the and the stories are sort of breathers breathing moments where you can rest and recuperate mm -hmm. between the big dramatic scenes yep. so some of those have minus three danger on or minus four danger because it's a, a moment to the danger is past mm -hmm. and you're kind of resting and that you know you you going from a to b it's the description of how you get to the next scene so by the time you've got to the next scene you've had a chance to cool yeah. down and things have settled down a bit so the things that the tracks have all come down mm -hmm. so it's kind of rather than being this single ramp that goes from the beginning of chapter one mm -hmm. all the way through chapter chapter 10 at the end it's it's more like kind of a, like a waves where it goes up and almost peaks yeah. and then you calms down a bit and then it goes up again and it goes down and you've just got to not ever Hit the peak. Hit the peak, <laughs> because that will will you know lose that. Yeah. Well, it lose that chapter. It won't necessarily lose you the whole act. It does depend. We it talked about that a on, little bit. Yeah, at the it end depends of the on what it is. If you if you do a series of really bad ones, you may well lose the whole mm -hmm. chapter, the whole act. But and you can in some of these, depending on the story, because a lot of the the plots are sometimes quite different. So there are some where you can actually end your time in the act on like uh, chapter four yeah. if you completely mess up and then mess up again and mess up some more <laughs> you, you'll end up in like it just sorry guys you're going to yeah. get so many chances interesting Dugalar said danger level increases uh, also increases the tension in the game and interestingly what i found when playing yesterday because it was only my second time playing the blue plume of vengeance is it increased the tension for different members of the groups at different points yeah. i was nervous about the danger very early as soon as we were going into the potential for three shadows, I was like, I want to stop adding to danger right now. Deal was more like, no, nah, we're going to have three yeah, shadows. Babas was like, where's the nightmare cards? I want six shadows. <laughs> but <laughs> Babas didn't care about the danger. And that was a weird dynamic for me because I was like, no, come on, we have to. And that decision point, when a shadow moves into a virtue and you have to decide, do I sacrifice the virtue to eliminate the shadow? That's right. Or do I let the danger go up? And the fact that although it's a cooperative game, that decision resides finally with the owner of the virtue if, is awesome. If you can't agree, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Babis is already well in the dark side. He is not going over. He is he, in he there. Is, he is. He's yes. got his cloak, his big high chair with the sides, his little droids that run about at the foot level, sending messages, dark side emails. I don't know what those little things do. Like they run up like. <laughs> shall we? Uh, shall we answer some questions, or shall we show a little bit of what's on the other side of this board? Actually, might be a nice idea. Although I will what's, say, what's underneath? Yeah, you? don't forget. Uh, oh, careful. What, what's under there? On the other side. You want to show them what's under Yeah. Don't forget, this is a, a prototype. This is only a sample. We've, we've put this together in this way to make it easy for us to kind of transport and show you guys. It'll go that way. Go that way. E that way, yeah. Oh, no, I thought this was going to be black. This was gonna oh, be did the, you? The, oh, the, no. the dark side. I'd forgotten. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we have something I on the other side. I forgot we did this because we were going to do it differently. There we go. There we go. So this would usually be four tiles, 20 centimeters each, that you would rearrange and put together. And of course, in the final version... And not also yeah. not necessarily the ones on the opposite side of these ones. Yes, of course. Um, your double-sided tiles will be um, all sorts of different stuff. No spoilers as... I'm not spoiling anything. I'm not spoiling anything. I'm being very, I think very if you don't good. want spoilers, you need to turn off now. Oh, that's, that's... I know what he's like. That's, stop that. Stop that now. Um, so this, just by the way we've set up this demo, is the scene three. This is what yes. follows on after your, uh, after your tavern. Yeah, yes. Talking to everybody in the tavern, yeah. And what I thought was really interesting, we, when I first played this, we did terribly. You know, hey, 400, 400 viewers, awesome, hello everybody. Um, we did really badly and we entered the scene in a terrible way. We entered the scene with multiple, uh, multiple pirates on the board. We entered the scene where Solomon was already like in the middle of the street and was basically Surrounded. surrounded. He was, uh, I need another, there we go, another source buckler. He was, he was caught in the middle of the street completely um, off guard. There were shadows like ever, I can't remember the exact layout, I'm kind of just throwing them down at this point. But there were shadows all around us and this is because we had a terrible outcome. We increased the danger too far and we did not come out with enough purity points from the initial yep. scene. When we played in the video, a little bit of a spoiler if you haven't watched the playthrough yet, we came out much better. We came out in hidden stunts. So we came out with a special discovery card. This is, a, again, a prototype card, but a special one that means that we start in a hidden status, which also then means that instead of the pirates ambushing us, they have to search for us first. And this enabled us to get a jump on the initial pirate and take one of them out immediately, which changed the whole thing. Um, that was that was it's wicked. It's one of those things where where it doesn't look on paper like a very different scenario. Yeah. 
it looks like those two scenes, oh, you've just been a bit lazy, you've just changed that number here and then, and, mm -hmm. that, and that's it. But when you play it, it's completely different. Chalk and cheese, Ab it's absolutely different. Completely, and that's, that's the, the, the nice thing, is that it doesn't take a lot to change one or two little bits, mm -hmm. and you come out with a gameplay experience mm -hmm. that is just totally different. Whenever we played the first time, and it went very badly for us, this was off camera. <laughs> this was censored by as people. Our back censored again. by as again. Um, yeah. We spent most of our resources moving virtues to shadows and running Solomon away yeah, from yeah. the pirates. So the they would we would try and stop them crowding us out. Yeah, yeah. Because if one or two pirates or thugs come at a time, we can rely on them making a mistake and terrible test to actually dispatch or move away from them. Yeah. You, can, you can kill them with riposts yeah, yeah. When, they, when, they, when you're on their own. Whenever we did the hidden version, we had that ground. So we picked the opportunity yeah. when we wanted to strike when they were split up. Yeah. And we could pick one off on and his own and then have the, small ones. That's the thing. Well, fighting one pirate is pretty easy for Solomon. <laughs> you've fighting heard, you've four heard of it. them at once is... Yeah, because oh, uh, yeah, this is the thing. A very different kettle of fish. Once the thugs and the shadows start ganging up, you're going to start getting a lot of modifiers. So this is the ideal range for sword fighting, which means he, he can um, fight here with Solomon with his sword with a plus one to his test because he's at an ideal range. Current yep. prototyping, playtesting rule. Um, but if, you, if he has buddies around and they are also adjacent, then he doesn't just get his bonus for being at his ideal range. He'll get an extra one, two, three on top of that. And if you start to have shadows... That's going well, to increase even further. Very nasty, very quickly. And this kind of situation, you're almost guaranteed to have negative effects on Solomon unless you're able to move out of there and start yeah, dodging Yeah, and away. that's the thing. You just need to start getting, getting out of there, only fighting one or two at a time. Yeah, and that, that's crucial. The movement and, and the, the virtues. The virtues to take out some of the shadows. Yeah. Because Solomon can't do anything about shadows on his own. Yeah, Mark asked me there, tell me if this is an Irish expression or you know this expression, chalk and cheese? Chalk and cheese, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I know that. Yeah, You've yeah, got absolutely. chalk and cheese. Very, yeah, couldn't uh, be more different. Uh, the, the, it's, it means... I think it's old-fashioned, but... Yeah, I love chalk I, and I, cheese I, as, I as a phrase. absolutely know that, yeah, yeah. Oh, Mark is Dutch. Well, there you go, Mark. I hopefully I've taught you something. You can teach me some Dutch at some point. We'll uh, meet at Essen and you can teach me some Dutch. I can't think of a convention we're going to closer to the Netherlands. Sometime, nope. sometime, sometime soon. There is a couple uh, in there are some there's, a, there's, there's some in uh, Utrecht. I can't remember what they're called. Um, me too, so double Dutch. Oh, awesome. Welcome all our Dutch fans. Um, do give Erwin a message on Facebook to make sure he runs a demo near you. So this for me was a real experience, getting to play it twice and having two completely different storylines, but then as an outcome of that, two completely different uh, fight scenes or ambush scenes because one was really stealth and one was um, well, yes, one they were ambushing you and the yes, the first you one, were yeah. ambushing them exactly. basically. you were kind of am counter ambushing yeah so that was that was epic I, I think I was really there was a couple of moments that really caught me I had to kind of keep my exposure during the stories especially because it really excited me uh, which was great okay let's have a bit of a Q&A time questions. let's go through and see what we have a few questions? questions tonight actually no one two three not many so Dean Dean asks, unfortunately, I can't pop the questions up on the screen, guys, so I'm going to just go ahead. Oh, halftime England, nil-nil. Thank you nil, for the update. Um, so Dean asked, I discovered this game yesterday, and it looks amazing. Thank Th you. Thank you, Dean. Uh, I have played for the core game currently and just wanted to ask about the all-in bundle. Will it be possible for people who have backed the project with the core game to buy the all-in bundle after the project has ended, or is this also limited within the project time frame? I know you had said that the game would be exclusive to Kickstarter uh, projects, so don't want to potentially miss out on the all-in bundle. Kind um, regards, Dean. Well, lovely message, Dean. Thank you, Dean. Hopefully you're um, still here. The, uh, after the, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Kickstarter, how Kickstarter works, but in Kickstarter, we, we don't know what you've pledged money for if you've pledged something beyond the core pledge value. And we don't get anything other than one email address from, uh, from Kickstarter, mm -hmm. so we need a pledge manager to manage your pledge that is something we'll do after the Kickstarter finishes uh, in, a, in a month time or in, in six weeks time or something like that. And during that, you, you will get an email that will say you pledged for this particular thing and do you want anything else, it, which will be an opportunity if you wanted to add something then, you could add something at that point. So you don't have to buy it now if you can't afford it or if you're not quite sure, yep. you get to choose later. 
Um, the pledge manager will be open for a minimum of a month. We had Joan of Arc open for, we had it open for I think two months, then again we closed it and we opened it because we had still some outstanding people who had yeah, Some people hadn't finished it. And, and that's the key thing. The pledge manager is a point where you do have to log into it onto Game on Tabletop and give us your shipping, your address details, where you're going, and you have to confirm all everything with your order because we need that information Absolutely. on there we, to get it to you. We can't send you your game if you don't tell us where it's sent to yep. because Kickstarter don't tell us an address. Mm -hmm. If you want us to send us the game, and we do mm -hmm. want to do that, <laughs> we'll need a, a, a real world address we can send something yeah. to. F Freddie makes a good point, which is if you can afford to manage your pledge now up to the limit that you think you can, because that will help us unlock more stretch goals on Kickstarter, That's which right. is which is great. And more stretch um, goals means everybody gets more goodies. Yeah. But the good thing is about the pledge manager is if you need to break it up across two or three That's months, right. you will have the time to do that. Yeah. And we will be very open and ahead, as far ahead as we can, give you notice about when the pledge manager will close. Yeah. Um, so you're not going to be caught. And we want as high a percentage of all of our backers to complete the pledge manager as possible. Yeah. We, so everybody gets what, yeah. they, what they want. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's yeah. but good, good question. It doesn't do us any good to have people you know, where, where they're not able to sort that out. I mean, yeah. We're quite happy to help. Um, so, Hitchhiker asks a good question for you, Jack. Is okay. it a disproportion that we have 50 Nightmare cards now, but only 30 Darkness cards? Uh, the Darkness cards are used more frequently than the Nightmare cards. And I think I want, what I wanted was the, dark, the Nightmare cards to be more different, more, more individual than, than the Darkness mm -hmm. ones. Because the Darkness ones are used kind of in everything. Yeah. So, and you, you don't get many nightmare cards, so I wanted them to stand out more. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if they're very extreme and different yeah. and individual, then you don't want to be seeing them repeatedly. So potentially, you could, uh, the, the, uh, the idea we're playing with at the moment is that you, once you've played them, you don't play them again that act. Okay. So you just leave them out. Oh, so, you, so, this, so you so will the reason get them once per gotcha. act. Whereas the darkness cards will come round and round because they're relatively generic ways of controlling mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. The nightmare cards are something horrible and particular and okay. individual has happened. So if you really wanted to add five per chapter or something crazy, you could do that. You could, you but that would yeah. be insane. Yeah, you'd <laughs> um, but, uh, but yes, I mean, that the idea being that, that they don't repeat. Mm -hmm. they, they just come, you, know, you use them, you, you in, once you've experienced them, then you put them to one side and that's the yeah. only time they turn up in. You know, okay. The baboon rebellion only happens once per act. <laughs> <laughs> Hitchhiker, I hope that was a good answer to your question. I'm going to throw a question at you just because the chat is in a very weird mood tonight. You're in a very weird mood tonight, chat. What, what you, I've, got, I've got a feeling that whenever we're what, live what now... What flavour of weird are they Well, today? what's your favourite type of cheese? Is the what's kind my favourite type of cheese? They're talking about Danish blue, um, Stilton. Uh, they're getting cheesy. You know, I, I'm, I'm not a fan Corgan of blue Zola. cheese particularly. No. Hate I mean, it. it. Oh, I don't, hate uh, it. I, no. I used it's to hate it. It's just mould. I used to hate it. It's just copper mold, yeah. But I, I used to hate it. But I, I'm kind of growing like I can cope with it. If it's in a, you know, five cheese pizza or something, but yeah, 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 yeah. okay. You kind of yeah. go, oh, okay, well, it's in a sauce or something like that. Maybe, <laughs> maybe here. Yeah. I'm quite like. Oh, okay, what do I like? Sorry, Ben has saved the conversation and brought us back to coconuts. Thanks, Ben. No, no, which, no, no wrong coconuts ben? again. No, our, ben. our Ben. Clapperton. <laughs> ben. <laughs> They're not even nuts. It's, nuts. it's a terrible misnomer. I, I, red Leicester is my go-to cheese for standard. Red Leicester? Yeah, no, but just as a standard everyday sandwich cheese, that's right? Just like, that's just like proper cheddar with funny colour yeah. in it. But then I like Mexicana cheese on burgers. I like smoked applewood, uh, so like jalapenos and chilies oh, mixed right. through okay. it. Oh, right, that's right, so good. Okay. I love brie if I'm like cooking it in the oven and I'm like dipping bread in it. Or camembert, Please. brie or camembert. Oh, oh, so good. A big wheel of brie or camembert and you take off the top oh, and it's gooey and you dip uh -huh. bread in and just come on, uh, come on, come uh. on, chat, come on. <laughs> somebody, somebody back me up. Parmesan, yeah, well, on, on spaghetti bolognese, sure, parmesan. Yes, fondue, male, thank you. Thank fondue. You. Yummy, says Mandy. As you're fun, just fun sick. Dudes. Shut, Rob. <laughs> fun, fun, but just bizarre. <laughs> Dairy these slices, says Ben. That's, <laughs> that, that's, yeah, that's, trust Ben to bring in ben, the that's, tone of the conversation. No, out. if you're going to have Dairy Lee, it's the triangles. It's not the slices. You go for burger cheese slices yeah, 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 if you're having slices. Did, do Dairy Lee make anything apart from triangles? They make slices, but Dairy Lee slices aren't as good not, as triangles. Not in the real world. Nobody, nobody believes that. Spray on cheese, Rob. Rob, are you American? Spray on cheese? Rob, are you American? Is that Rob, are you American? Spray on cheese? Spray on cheese? It sounds 
horrible. I, I don't. I don't want to know. I mean, no, you can't back out of this now, Rob. You weren't kidding. You, you, you like spread and cheese. Don't come on. Own it. Own it. <laughs> Monterey Jackson, amazing cheese. Anyway, next question. Uh, Zoltan, I'm going to call him Zoltan Dit Rai again. Um, is it a spoiler to tell us which story includes the picture from the rule book with the three ghostly women? That is an absolutely amazing question that I'm going to pass to you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and the answer no, is. The answer is simply that whenever we start a project at Mythic Games, a lot of the time we start with art. Uh, we, we do game design, of course, as well, but the vision for how the world should look, I think you guys know this with Mythic Biology, you feel it with Joan of Arc. The way the world and the whole thing has to feel starts really early in the process. And we do a lot of concept art, we throw things out there and see what's going to stick. And three ladies as ghosts were one of those kind of very early pieces that we did that wasn't from any of the original Swamkin stories. Um, it was something that the artist did that kind of it's kind of Sparked a mood imagination. board. Yeah. It's kind of a mood board in, a, in as, a, as a piece of art to sort of, you know, oh, this kind of thing. He's kind of fighting ghosts or fighting, you know, is this, is this the right kind yep. of feel? So it's not from a specific story. It's kind of trying to capture a mood. And it's, it's something that um, we may or may not leave in. It's, we put the rule book together primarily for the rules, and obviously there's a bunch of art in there. We're going to look to improve and refine that and make sure the layout all looks well. Um, but it was just something that... It, puts, it was that kind of interesting situation where Solomon being attracted by sirens and being tormented by yeah. not just spirits, but ladies who were testing his will as a Puritan. It, as an initial thought around the kind of troubles we were going to put Solomon into, it was that kind of... But I don't think they're going to feature in a story. I, there's currently no plans for them. Yeah. Um, thanks for the idea. Maybe in a future campaign. I mean, we've said this kind of openly, and I think we can, we can definitely say it now. Um, if there's enough interest, of course, we'll look at Solomon Cain, new stuff there, in the future. There are, there are a handful of stories that we didn't get to, the, the original ones from, from Robert Howard. Um, and there are various other stories that other people have done uh, in, in comics mm -hmm. and in various other mediums. And uh, we talked to Cabinet, who own the license, and they've been very open about us potentially exploring other mm -hmm. types of things if we wanted to, if we had the opportunity. So there's lots of lots of places we could go with Solomon. And we come back to do it again. He has a whole history that we, we don't He's know got, a huge amount about that we can yeah, there's explore. Lots of, there's lots and lots of mentions of him with Barbary Corsairs mm -hmm. and yeah. him going off and doing this in the Orient. And they're, they're sort of mentioned in passing. Like, I want to do as Francis Drake. I want to do the Spanish right. Armada. I want to yeah, do the Navy. There's all sorts of, all sorts of yeah, I mean, he was a galley slave at one point. Yeah. And oh. there was all sorts of things that, that are mentioned, mm -hmm. but never explored. Yeah. I mean, the Red Shadows is actually an interesting example of, mm -hmm. of something that was mentioned in passing yeah. and we did expand on and we could just do lots more of that mm -hmm. and, and then say well what, how did he end up as a, as a galley slave yeah. a Barbary pirate galley I want to know how he became the world's best sword fighter in the 16th century I don't yeah. know where he got I mean, his where, start where, how, did these, how um, did these things come about so you know young Solomon the series uh, there's some no so no the ladies the, the, oh, that's actually good the, 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 the ladies um, are not the virtues no they're definitely not no. uh, my vote what was your official vote for cheese when we put this topic to bed my vote for cheese it depends on what I'm what I'm see, having that's for see, me I'm, yeah. see, I'm I, I, but I'm I'm much less fussy cheese for cheese I, I want simple like Wensleydale the mm. purity of it like, the, a very the purity no, I mean, it's not it. got little bits of other random things true, thrown true, in it true. Okay. it's just Wensleydale so for, we've just hit the 48 hour mark and anyone who's come flooding to the site has just entered a conversation with us talking about cheese absolutely so welcome them well, in we, with open arms we, you know <laughs> <laughs> with open cheese. <laughs> um, we're up to 6,030 backers, which is just absolutely amazing. And under 48 hours now, that's just crazy. Uh, maybe Solomon was taught by George Silver. Do you know who that is? That's not a name rings a bell to me, actually. Who is not that, Rob? Long John Silver. <laughs> George Silver. Did I say John Silver? No, um, no. Long John. Yes, but no. Um, the, the other, someone has suggested taking the ghost picture and sort of misting out maybe the bottom to, to keep people happy. That's something we may do. We have so much art that we are spoiled for choice is the honest answer. We're not going to struggle to fill the rule book, story book, and of course the art book that comes with, with the core, uh, with the... I expect you'll see it in the art book. Art book comes with the core pledge. Am I right? Am I wrong? No, no, no. Art The blue ladies. Yes. Sorry. I got, I got myself all turned around for a second there. 
Um, Solomon Cain. Oh, we had a big bunch of people. It looks like loads of people are getting the 48 hour email and they're just coming along and saying, wait, what's uh, going on wait, here? Wait, why are they talking about cheese? Maybe someone just shared it on a cheese <laughs> forum and we're like, there's a really interesting cheese conversation. celebrity cheese. Um, <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome. I am very sad evening, that... Dude. The, the we don't any longer get the notifications saying new people have back. It is, it is, it is yeah, it is a pity. I don't know why that's being changed. So welcome everybody who's who's new to a good place. You're in a good place. This this is this is where to be. Um, yeah, a cheesy yeah. place. A cheesy place. Yeah, I feel like the UK the UK office really is a cheesy place actually. Um, Mr. E52 said, "Will the art book contain all concept art and artwork used in the game?" I think it's safe to say it won't contain everything. We had, uh, you know, concepts are concepts. There's some stuff that's... Well, a lot know. of stuff kind of gets worked over the top of. So, yeah. I mean, if you... you that's know, a good someone, someone will go, here's, here's the rough I'm thinking of doing. And you say, well, change this, move that. What about this? And, and then they go away and do that. Yeah. But you don't always save every single step in the process. And they're not, they're not always terribly interesting to see what each one has done. The there may be concepts um, we have to get. We haven't been showing sketches. We have sketches of, of, of miniatures and so on. We we don't we haven't been showing them because we we need everything approved before we can show you. Mm -hmm. And we thought well we'd show you the final things and that was that was what we've been focusing on. We may put some sketches in just as a as a reference point so the sort of thing we've done. Yeah. Um, but on the whole, I mean, the, one of the th reasons we make the concepts for the miniatures is so that they, we make the miniatures from them, and they're very, very close. So, if you've seen the miniatures, you kind of seen the concepts. I um, I was going to see if I could find the uh, one of my favourite concepts. I'm not sure if it has been shared or not before, with uh, the Solomon Cain related to the current sporting event going on. Oh, that one. That's been a, that's been that's been shared, hasn't it? Yeah, what, that, I can't been. remember what update that was on. Did you guys no, see the the, 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 the concept art of football, Solomon Cain? That was something that we really were uh, excited for. I thought he would have been an amazing mini. <laughs> um, just to have, if you're chasing someone through the savannah and he's just kicking a football on as he goes, like that would have just been chilling, minding his own business. Would, would have been absolutely perfect. So yes, you'll see you'll see bunch a bunch of different types of art, but I don't think you'll see every single piece of concept art. It does just doesn't really make sense. No. Mark said you should make an art video around the art book. That's we may actually do. a pretty nice suggestion. We, we may do, but not before the 20, 48 hours yeah. is over. No, it's definitely not going to happen. Um, but that's a really so like when you say um, an art video around the art book, do you have something particular in mind? Because to me, I think having Gilem talk about the art is something that I think people yeah. are really yeah. interested in. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we interviewed, he was one, was he one of our interviews? He was one yeah, of the written interviews. He yeah. was one of our written interviews that you can find on Facebook, on the Solomon Cain Facebook page. There's a there's an articles or notes section, I think it's called. And there is an interview with Gilem where he talks about the art and kind of the process he goes through and you see some of his works. Um, oh, Ben's sharing something for us. What are you sharing, Ben? Is that ben, the link is he sharing something useful? Is he sharing something cheesy? Oh, and he's sharing something that's 25 seconds long. It can only be cheesy. Life of Brian, blessed are the cheese makers. Ben! <laughs> that's, that's very helpful. Thank you, for, thank you for finding that for us, Ben. That's super helpful. The UK office is definitely the cheesiest office. Absolutely is. Um, I'm going to show off a few minis for a second because we've got a bunch of new people jumping on. Hopefully, welcome if you're in the last 48 hours and you're having a peruse through the site. If you don't know what Solomon Cain is, it is an adventure board game, cooperative initially, but we also do have solo and we have competitive modes. And you'll be taking this dashing gentleman. If I bring him in. This is Mr. Solomon Cain himself. Unfortunately, yours will arrive unpainted. I'm very, very humbled to say. And guiding Solomon Cain through his adventures, you will be working together as the four cardinal virtues. It's always nice to show off the virtues, isn't it, really? It is, mind us all. So we have prudence here, flanked then by justice, and I'm gonna to have to move them out to get the rest of them in because here comes temperance, and then alongside temperance, we have courage. And the idea is that you, as the cardinal virtues, will have to guide Solomon through his adventures in the 16th and 17th century across many, many, many different adventures, lots of different stories, many different acts and chapters as you play through, and you evolve your own story for where Solomon should go, and all the while, Solomon is going to be getting chased. He's going to be getting maligned by not only physical beings, but also non-physical, spiritual darkness and evil. And these are our shadows, which you can now have, thanks to stretch goals, 
six of <laughs> thanks for unlocking six shadows thanks, guys. um guys uh, <laughs> like i've i struggle uh four's quite nasty i struggle enough six with is, four six um, is seriously unhelpful because i'm um I, yeah i i have not played with uh really with the the nightmare cards at all yet and i i do not i'm not looking forward to it like in any way shape or form i just i just think six six shadows is is instant oh my god um, I, I'm not going to lie, I genuinely think it is Babas' fault. I, I really do think the fact that we have six is, is genuinely Babas' fault. Um, ever since he came along to the studio, things have just gotten a little bit darker. So alongside the spirits... He's not, he's not here. No, uh, so I, I can must just be his fault. sense him. What will you also be con- <laughs> you'll also be contending with pirates and thugs, brigands and bandits, all of them on gorgeous, beautiful scenic bases. And, and ghosts and ghostly riders and you could jump up and grab the ghost there. Do you want to grab the ghost while he's up there? Can you, can you see him up there? Get the ghost and the victim. Just in case oh, we have new people coming along. We're at 483. Oh my word! Thank you so much for coming along, guys, and watching. So you'll be guiding Solomon through adventures with pirates, pirates, ghosts, tribesmen, vampires, oh, really? just anything and everything. All the darkest oh, world. Thank you. Ooh, the, I actually put the tribesmen back in their box. Let's get to a million, says Lars. Oh, that's awfully sweet of you, Lars. We're just going to do. We're just going to keep going and show off some more guys here. All, I think. That's all we got to have. Now, not only will you have to fight, but you also have to help. You have to support. You have to save the likes of Jack Hollister from having his betrothed Mary kidnapped. You're going to have to decide if you want to spend time teaming up with Jack to fight against bandits and pirates. But maybe doing so will put you against nobles and men who are not in your favour and you'll end up having to fight guards, mercenaries, soldiers, men at arms who are going to turn against Solomon when he tries to bring justice to people and your actions that you take are going to change the story as you evolve it. Um, oh man, I, I want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> I, literally, I literally left from filming when we filled the, play, the playthrough that's now on YouTube. Mm. I was so excited to play Solomon Cain again, and that was after playing it twice in two days. I was like, I need to play it a third time because there's more stories I haven't looked at yet. We just unlocked a stretch goal. Hey, did we? Did we unlock a stretch goal? It's not right. Mine's not updated it's yet. Not a, a, Everyone's a saying yes. You wouldn't fit to us, backers. You wouldn't fit. Nine dollars to go. One one nil. I what, remember one nil. One. No, it was oh. one. Remember, a minute after the kickoff. A minute after the kickoff. They were telling us it was one nil. No, no, done. Can we trust yeah, them? Yeah, I think we can trust can we them. Trust we them? trust them. Well, well done. Unfortunately, everybody. your update will be a little late because I haven't finished writing <laughs> it yet. <laughs> this gentleman will be the one to post the update. So as soon as we're gone from so here, Jacob will be straight done. to that. But oh, I'll be doing that immediately. After. Well done, guys. Thank you so much for unlocking Excellent. the Abbot. Well done. Uh, the ride, yeah, we're just entering the last 48 hours. You're very right, Gabriel. It's time to join. Welcome, everybody who's newly backed. We've got a bunch of new backers, actually. I'm sorry the notifications aren't popping up to say, but you're in a very, very good place, or in the UK office, a cheesy place. Um, thank you so, so much for backing the campaign. Let's look at more minis. Let's show up more stuff. So we talked a little bit about the shadows, a bit about the, the thugs and bandits Solomon will be fighting. But, of course, in the world that Solomon lives in, You'll also have characters to interact with. You'll have the likes of barkeeps. You'll have the likes of tavern wenches or waitresses. You'll have the like of boys and women and families. And every single one will have its own scenic sculpted base and story that goes alongside them that will be specific to the adventure and the act that you're currently playing in. And you're going to have to use Solomon to interact with them, talking with them, potentially threatening them, using your strength, your wit. You want to chat a bit about your story? 500 people. Welcome, everybody. Wow. My word. Club 300. Yes. Do you know what? My big heart goes out to Club 300. The Club 300, for anyone that doesn't know, were um, halfway through the campaign, even a week before we even mentioned the, the final cost of what the all-in would be. Club 300, we said it would be around £300, uh, $300, sorry. And Club 300 said, $300, let's all go, let's do it, yep. before the all-in was even announced. And Club 300 were so... Guys. Thank hats off to everybody who decided. It's, and and you know that's that's just nice to be here and people say yeah. we trust you, we believe in you. <laughs> Gabriel says, I think it's time to seriously think about a forty eight hours long live until the end. <laughs> well I can tell you right now that in the last hours of Thursday, when we finish, we're finishing at eight PM BST, nine PM Central European time. I think it'll be two PM EDT, I think. That kind of I think we will we will confirm that uh, announce um, proud member of the 300 
Oh, 3 p.m. says, thanks, Ben. 3 p.m. EDT, we will finish on Thursday. For the two hours leading up to the end, you're going to have Leo. Leo will be live for the last two hours celebrating. He highly recommends, and we highly recommend, you get some fizz and some bubbles to, to share it with us. And before that, we'll also have a live from the UK office where we'll get everybody together. We might even get Ben in front of the camera. What do you think, Ben? We come in front of the camera for the last day? Mm. Oh, David Weir says, I'm backing through my friendly local game store, Orlin. Thank you very much, Excellent. sir. We are doing retail pledges that will, um, if you've got a local game store that you think could pick it up, they can get the details below and find out about getting in touch with us and organizing that. And um, we do both the all in with all the stretch goals and uh, of course the course set as well. But outside of retail pledges, the Kickstarter, the game is Kickstarter exclusive. So barring Kickstarter and obviously the pledge manager where you can late pledge if you wish, um, you'll not be able to pick it up. Once it's done, it's done. So. Be warned, hopefully you're here all as backers and hopefully you're, you're going to get in now. Leo on Champagne is going to get emotional. Yes, it is. He will. What's next for the stretch goal, Louis says? Spoil as we have earned it. We can, can we? We can, we can well, if, if you, you, they've you, earned you, it. You go ahead. I'll, I'll let you have this because you know what, all the what details. We're, what we're doing for the next stretch goal is we're having an intermission. We were doing the, we're doing the Haunted Mountain and because it's 48 hours and because we want to make sure that it's in and you guys have got this at the moment we you, you, as you may have noticed there's an awful lot of stuff in the pile of goodies for stretch yep. goals and that has to be stored and sent somewhere so at the moment that's just a big cardboard box and <laughs> freddie and frank are excited they know helpful, <laughs> they know <laughs> helpful as that may be helpful as that may be functional as that may be it just doesn't look great on your shelf so we have decided to go back to an idea we had in Mythic Battles Pantheon and in Joan of Arc, and we are going to do a, a second really nice, beautifully rendered box to store all of your stretch goals in, which will look beautiful on your shelf, which will be, have a different design from everything else. It's called- So a unique name? Can you remember? I can remember it. It's Solomon it, Kane's Arsenal. Oh, Kane's Arsenal. Arsenal. What an absolutely great name. And it's got a picture of the, his guns yep. on the front. And anyway, so you have some of that. So the update, Jack is obviously with us um, right now, but the update will come later this the evening. Will explain all this. But the idea is this is this is something that uh, it's quite an expensive for us. It's quite, it's one of those things where it's it's a box, which is oh that's, that's lovely, yeah. but it's actually quite expensive to make mm. heavyweight game boxes. So, but we thought it's it is just so much nicer when you get them and it, and when you get things because I back a lot of Kickstarters and when you back a Kickstarter and you get stuff and you go. Oh, it's the the core box, and then there's this kind of there's this packaging. Yeah, that, that has it's nowhere to not, go, it's and, not, yeah. it doesn't, and it doesn't sit nice. And it's and anyway, so it's a and the the, the box will be as big as the sort the, the base box. How deep it is will depend on what it, we end up with that needs to go in it. Keep unlocking stuff. But the more you unlock, the deeper the box gets. <laughs> basically, um, but it's going to be fairly monstrous already. So that means you will get a big box of the core game. And another big box to sit on top of it, yep. and then if you've got if any of the expansions, you'll get those boxes as well. So you wouldn't be able to see it if you put it on. Them. So that is going to be the next stretch goal. Well, so it's going to be an goal. intermission in this. Yeah. And then once we've done that, we will return to the haunted mountain. Now hold on. On the haunted mountain, have we shown yet any of the we, kind of evil minis? No, nope. I don't think we have. Could we tell them a little? We could tell them a little bit about what kind of evil I don't know do you know what I, I think they should I think they should wait no come on wait. come on we're in the last 48 hours now we can we can oh, wait, guys what kind of haunted mountain what kind of things would you find on a haunted mountain with abbots what kind of thing what kind of give me some throw out some names here I, for I things what, that do inter, hauntings instead, instead of that I tell you what, when I was when I was talking to a, a guy I was working with about the narrative design about the stories and the, and, and the way oh, the stories okay. that we were um, developing that weren't original or weren't, where we were finishing off the fragments that, that Robert Howard had done part of, uh, one of the ones, one, one of the avenues we were exploring was going back to period mm -hmm. folklore yeah, yeah. and period. So, so the ogre is there because I found that the, the, ogre, the word ogre was, was coined in France at exactly this time period. So we've set a story about an ogre in France yeah. because that just seemed to make sense. And so we were looking at uh, folklore of the, um, the Black Forest in Germany, and, and I, I found several things that, um, there were several references to ghosts in sacks. 
playing sax? It ghost, no, not ghost playing sax, <laughs> ghosts in sax. Oh, in sax. Okay, I got you now, got you now. And, and I thought that was a really bizarre yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because normally you think of ghosts as being insubstantial. White and sheets you or and, and it is weird. How would you style? go in a, a, Anyway, so I thought <laughs> that was such a bizarre thing. And, they, and there's several, <laughs> several stories about that in yeah. this area. Mm -hmm. And we know, we know uh, Kane was in the Black Forest mm -hmm. because the, that's where Rattler Bones is set. And so we thought, well, let's just build something around this idea. Yeah. So we looked in these, this folklore and we, and we started with that. And, and that was, um, it's based on this idea where the, there, there are ghosts causing trouble and the local monastery resolves this trouble by putting the ghosts in the sacks. Oh, that's actually a, that's <laughs> that's something actually a, real, a real piece of folklore wow. from this period, from this area. And so that's where we kind of came from and we thought because i wanted to to not just make stuff up out of thin air i wanted to keep give it a a genuine sort of grounding in 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 real folklore in real mythology in the real time let's see the guesses guys i'm disappointed by the guesses that come through yeti cheese monster ghost evil oh. nuns medusa uh sack ghost real folklore drowners now interestingly talking about ghosts we do of course have already the ghost of gideon if you're just coming, if this is one of the core box um, adventures that you have where Solomon Cain has to make a decision about a path he takes that could result in him saving the life of this poor welfare traveler from this tormented spirit of Gideon, this ghost of Gideon with rending claws. That's on. This is actually, the final mini for this has actually been improved even further. There's even actually more detail on the final version of the ghost than there is on even this painted one by the magical Seb Levine. Um, England are 1-0 up. And, fight, and fighting, fighting against this ghost in the story is um, the only thing that, that is at all substantial in terms of you can actually damage it. Yeah. Are the claws. <laughs> and so Solomon's fighting this ghost and it's just the sword goes through it, pistol shots do nothing. And he keeps getting shredded by these claws. It's just maniacal laughter. And, and it's and a, bad, a bad place to be in this fight. Uh, to answer your question, uh, Xanthor, these are actually 3D printed. These are early, early samples of what we're going to be doing. The final version, of course, will be done in uh, soft plastic. But we will also PVC. be using hard PVC. So RP, uh, PVC. PVC. PVA is a glue. Uh, you said it every time and I always, always I know, nearly I always say it. Do and then, uh, I, but I always nearly say it. And for the swords and quite specifically things like spears the spears, and, and stuff like that. We will be using uh, hard plastic ABS. for those ABS. There you go. Jet's got us covered to ensure that these do come out in the way that we want them to. So these I come out. The TLAs. Poker Street. <laughs> I really want to get, you know what? Go and grab the boxes underneath the thing. And we're going to get some more minis out of the boxes, guys. I think we need to show off some more stuff. Um, get this stuff out of the way. So anybody who hasn't seen it before, this gives you a little idea for the kind of boards that you'll be playing on as well. So this is a sample of a tavern, of a, the back alley of a tavern, but on the other side, we also have a tavern itself, the indoor tavern. This is just a mock-up, but it'll give you an idea of the kind of terrain that you'll be playing on. So your tiles will come 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. So this would be an example of four tiles, but the tiles will not always be laid out in squares. You will also have uh, long runs of tiles, potentially oddly shaped tiles, and you'll have all the areas, there's some more boxes down there, and you'll have all the areas um, will actually always match up. So whenever you're playing, depending on how well you've done in previous chapters, you may have different layouts with different characters, different virtues starting on the board, and also different enemies, NPCs, and stories to go down and investigate. We have a playthrough that we actually show off how this works. This in particular is called the Blue Flame of Vengeance. And this is a tavern, which I've been told correctly now, should be called the Gunnels. Go on, Jack, sneak back in. I'm trying to do this without oh, Everyone hates a floppy cables. sword. Uh, our 3D printing service is called Erwan. Uh, he, <laughs> he is our internal 3D printer. He does pretty much everything himself, ships it over in these gorgeous Feldherr boxes to us from uh, Paris, which is why when you watch tomorrow evening and also on Thursday, um, Leo will be live from, the, from hopefully the Paris office. Um, thank you. And he will show off even more minis. We have a small selection here uh, of what you find, but in the Paris office, we'll be showing off even more live. Thank you. So let's go to Africa. Let's show off some tribesmen and show off three gorgeous sculpts here. We actually have more than one, well, more than one tribe in the whole set. Yeah. 
because we have uh, we visit Africa more than once and we thought rather than just repeating the same ones again mm -hmm. we would do have you got La Costa? Oh no you bring La Costa in. Um, we would do different tribes with different ornamentation and different characters. Well this is because, because the, se not? the second tribe are of the Nagari isn't that right? Um, because the other tribe, they're, they're the, the witch the doctors there, and the, yeah. The Nagari do turn up, um, but um, no, I think there's more than one tribe anyway. Oh, here we go. So this I lose track. There's so many <laughs> is Golka here and Songa. Golka is the champion, the gorilla killer. He is the, the well, the physical uh, specimen of the tribe that leads the way. And beside him is the clan's leader. This is Songa. Songa on his gorgeous base with the raised up rock as he kind of stands up. If you watched our second trailer, the trailer we released for Red Shadows, you have seen both of these guys, Songa on his throne and Golka with a scream that was just absolutely epic, um, ready to sacrifice Solomon and Nalonga um, to well, quench their gods to spill the blood of the white man invader it's, in this well, case. Well, it's, like it's um, in, the, in the story there, they worship the uh, what, what Ken called the black god, which mm -hmm. is this little black statuette, mm -hmm. which looks suspiciously Cthulhu oh. kind of mythos. Love that Lovecraft of. Over, overlap. And that's because, of course, Robert E. Howard knew Lovecraft. Yeah. It, personally, they were mates. So they had lots of uh, lots of uh, so pen pal letters that you, went back and you forth. Get, yeah. yeah, you get um, all sorts of interweaving of that kind. It's why you see, sometimes see mythos stuff in Conan yep. and mythos stuff and all sorts of, and the 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 Red Horror, of course, is the Red Horror mini. If you haven't seen it, is just <laughs> very much of that kind of. Kind of uh, not a not a fan, not a fan. Like it's, it's some if it, when it's on the tabletop, I want it off the tabletop as quickly as uh, possible. Uh, it is it is gribbly in every sense of the word. It is big and gribbly and. And um, to show you guys a little bit of just how, where, let me bring Solomon back in, just to show you the scale of some of the larger minis that Solomon has to contend with. And um, so here we have yeah, Solomon. Songa. Solomon's actually quite big. He's supposed to be sort of six foot six or something. So he's he's a, supposed to be big, and we've made him tall, but he's tall and thin. Gulker, on the other hand, is that has the tall and built like shoulders, the side of yeah. a house. Bring Solomon round. Yeah, Solomon, t he has the strength and the speed and the agility and the sharp wit, but he does not have the same brawn as someone it like the not, Gorilla Killer. Just that big and solid yep. wall of muscle. If we look at something that's less sort of African related then, we could have a look at some of the kind of well, these are more the villains. These so not not this nemesis. Is La, this is Lacosta. He's he's a he's a sort of mini boss. He's a sidekick of Lalu. So Lalu Lalu is the arch nemesis of of Solomon Kane. He was in he our is, original trailer. He's the uh, guy in the very beginning yeah. who kills the young girl at the very beginning. And then he's again featured in the Red Shadow trailer, harking back to the story again, being the reason or part of the reason that Solomon ends up in Africa and in the position, the, the terrible the position, he's in. Yeah, he's, he, because. Because the the young girl who was killed in the trailer is the beginning of Red Shadows because she is murdered. Solomon Cain wants to get revenge for this mm -hmm. and f find whoever did it. He learns it's Lulu and then chases him across Europe through Italy and France and Spain and then ends up chasing him into Africa, which is where the Red Shadows story does all of this. And ends up in in Africa, fighting Golka and Songa and all of these, as well as Lulu. But, but first, Lacosta, yeah, he has to get through. Costa is this sidekick of Lulu all the way through, with amazing facial hair, absolutely stunning facial hair. Mister Mustachios. I love his throwing knife. Absolutely love his throwing knife. The guys were saying in chat there. I hope uh, Freddie was saying. I hope this kind of uh, base becomes the new standard for miniature board games. I don't. You have to remember, Freddie. Not everyone can live up to our standards. You know, we have high standards. It's asking a lot. Who else do we have to show off? We haven't shown yet. Have to bring in. Oh, let's bring in the tavern lady again. I really like her actually. Oh, actually, hold on. Did we bring in? Did we bring Sam in? Who? Who's uh, that? 
Sam. I got his name right. <laughs> I got his name right this time. We Jeez. definitely are going to have to get a fish hawk in the UK, man. He's so the fish hawk is the epitome of the amazing kind of charging sink base, and he's the mini you see in the first trailer doing the swiping attack with the dual swords on Sullivan. Like stripy yeah, trousers. I'm not going to. Uh, can we show the devil? I do not have the devil here, unfortunately, because um, it's interesting. We had the devil in Joan of Arc, who was a massive, big, horned beast. 20 times as big as a human, absolutely massive. But the devil in this one relates to the Salem witch trials, the witch trials. Do you want to chat a little bit about that? Yeah, that, well, that was a, a very conscious decision because we'd kind of done the big, scary monster version of the devil. Yeah. I, want, I, wanted a, I really wanted to do a, a sort of insidious, plotting, very dangerous, mm -hmm. but subtly so different kind of, of, of devil who wasn't enormous and, and obviously yeah. a big muscly monster that would tear the lid off a house yeah um and so we've got we've got uh, and he's he looked i think we've got a very nice po uh still but threatening mm -hmm. he's he's, he's goat-headed he's ominous like he has he's a real just got this real presence about him that, that there's just something not not at all settling or safe about him uh, and that, and that he is the, the idea of the Sal Salem stories is they're not the famous witch hunts because that's much, much quite a yep. bit later than Solomon, but they're the idea that this this place is tainted, yep. and that the reason why you have the trials later is because the whole place has been tainted by oh. the good twins and their their evil, so the creepy looking, oh, all the twins. So they're, they're trying to summon the devil himself. Yep. Uh, and of course, if you go down the right path, then maybe you can avoid that. If you go down the wrong path and keep going wrong, then maybe you can't avoid that. And so it could, you could end up with a situation where Solomon Cain is literally fighting the devil. And I, I will say welcome everybody. We've jumped up to 6,071 backers. So welcome everybody welcome who has just back. This is really going to be an exciting 48 hours. We're going to have lives tomorrow. We're going to have lives on our final day on Thursday as well. There'll be an update later this evening talking about the stretch goal that you guys just unlocked yep. plus the new 1 million stretch bad. goal. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, we're rocketing. We're yeah, rocketing yeah, towards yeah. it. Would you imagine we hit a million before you go home to write the update? That would be pretty mad. I'd have to write a longer update. <laughs> <laughs> we just did a, a recent Let's Play as well. So if you want to, you can scroll yeah. down the page. It's now on the main, the main Kickstarter page itself. There's a, a Let's Play video right in the middle where you can see myself, Babas, and Deal, two of our game developers, playing through some of the Blue Flame Avengers. So apologies, it's a little on the quiet side, um, but if you turn your volume up, Hopefully you, sh you should be absolutely fine. Um, we will have more gameplay during the Pledge Manager as well and after that too because we've got this amazing studio. We might as well, might as well, might use, as well it. use it. Um, a couple of things I want to say. I see more questions coming in and a couple of votes going on questions. So for anybody... Uh, <laughs> Deal, like I say, deal. Um, anybody that's just joined, a couple of questions that are getting voted up. Um, Dean asked earlier um, if you back the game now just for the core pledge, at a later stage, can you upgrade with the add on for the all in? Yep. Yes, you can. You can do that during the pledge manager. The pledge manager will come about two to three weeks after the campaign finishes. We should have the pledge manager open, and everybody has to go on there, fill in your details so we know where to ship it, finalize all your payments and everything that you have to there. And then if you want to, during that late pledge or pledge manager stage, you may add on extra stuff if you want. That's completely at your discretion. And it'll be open for at least a month, but with Joan of Arc, we did end up having for three, I think, in total, with also reopening to give people time. So we will keep it open as long as you guys really need it to, so we can get all of you sorted with because the Because we, we want you guys to complete the pledge manager so that we know where we, where we can send the games to. That's it. So just hopefully anyone that's so just backed, you, you do have the time for that. But... Yeah. As anyone in the community will uh, say to you, if you can put yeah, your money towards the Kickstarter now before we close on Thursday, that's great because it unlocks more stretch goals and we can chuck even more stuff into the box, which we would love to do. Um, Ker oh, Kerskin says, I don't suppose there will be a fifth virtue to play, not counting the solo one for even more variety and not counting darkness Obvious. as well because we've got providence. It's a kind of anti-virtue. Yeah. Uh, and darkness. So, the not, so I mean, there, there were four cardinal virtues. There were four yeah. cardinal virtues and, and not five. So <laughs> there, there are many, 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 I mean, as in dozens and dozens of other people who are other entities that have been called virtues over the years. And depending on who you, who you ask, you get different combinations. Uh, and which is why we stuck to the four cardinal virtues, because pretty much everyone agrees on them. Yeah. As soon as you go outside the four, then nobody agrees on anything. Yeah. So, and, and, and there's no clear fifth one you would add. It, yeah. it, it doesn't really, there's no clear, tidy way of doing yeah. that. 
So it would be pretty much arbitrary if we added another one. So the answer is no, we, w we weren't planning to do that. Yeah. Providence is a sort of bigger meta virtue in a way who works for the solo game and then we have darkness. So we've got six mm -hmm. big minis already. <laughs> Martin Biggs, you're very welcome for the answer, by the way. Please, again, if you have questions, guys, pop them in the Q&A. Make sure that I see them. Uh, Martin says you could do the seven deadly sins. Oh, could you imagine gluttony? We, oh. we, we could, but A, that's kind of being done. Yeah. Um, and, and B, they're not, they're, there is a kind of antithesis to each of the court cardinal virtues. Uh, that are cardinal vices, but that's never really had as much currency and mm. it's never been as widely accepted. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of a different game. My vices are staying up too late and having chocolate after midnight. How, how will that mini look like? <laughs> big purple big, eyes, big, big baggy eyes. eyes. <laughs> Nestle or dairy milk <laughs> bar being dragged behind that they dunk people with. That would be, uh, that would be my vice. I may have missed this. In terms of big minis though, if you're not obviously looking outside their virtues, you have a whole ton of stuff. In the core box alone, you have the huge ghosts, you have the Death's Black Riders as well. You will get Providence and Darkness. You've also got the Ogre, you've got the Alpha Wolf, there's a bear in there. There's a oh, bunch of big minis in the core box alone. Outside of that, you've also got the Red Horror, you've got the Wendigos, of which you get four if you're interested in taking Solomon to America, where he's never been before. That's brave new world for us as it is for Solomon as well. Oh, the big, you've got the snake, of snake. course. Um, giant un snake. Unfortunately, Leo is hoarding. Come on, guys. Leo next, is hoarding next, all of these nice 3D prints. Time to help your friend Az here. Next Leo Live, tomorrow night. Just tell him. To just, send tell him. just tell Leo, him. Leo, Az and Jack need some minis. Send us the 3D prints. Need some love. Um, Come on, guys. Snake each for, Oh, snake. Danger Noodle. I snake. like to I like to boop a snoot of a Danger Noodle, and then snake. they run away. Um, there's a bear in there, yeah. There's a bear there's indeed a bear. in the there's in the core box that again was unlocked by you guys. That's part of the castle. Did I no? I, I can't even remember which. I remember what's, what's, I'm, the, what's I'm, the bear I'm, in. What's the bear in? Everyone will be able to tell us. I should just ask. I shouldn't even. I shouldn't even need to look. The bear is. Bear, 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 bear. What? No, was it the Death Black Riders? No, there it is. Yes, it was indeed. Death it was Black the Death Black Riders. I mean, you got the you got the four riders as well. Yeah, they're not small. Um, Kane's arsenal stretch goal is up. Thank you. Good. Whoever Thank in the you, back David. office. Thank, Thank you, is it David? I'm guessing it's David. David had guests tonight as well. He's, he's, yeah, he's David's, David's uh, uh, impossible to stop. Yeah, ben, Ben's eating cheese. It wasn't Ben. Um, oh, wait, David is chatting. Yes, thanks, David. You're a legend. Um, we should say a big thank you. There's a lot of people behind the scenes you guys don't get to see. It's yeah. guys that do the layout, the graphics, the image changes. John McMillan just became backer 6076. I have no work? idea why that appeared. That work? John, what magic button did you press to make your name Brilliant. appear? Wow. Welcome. You're Welcome. in a good place. Oh, that's just... Hey. We haven't seen that. We haven't seen in... that at all. That's the first time we've seen it this campaign. John. The first time. John, you are special. Per John is like, what's happening? What's yeah, going on? Yeah, you are You are a special. The family person. across the room were like, why is your PC shouting at you? <laughs> <laughs> John, the kill Kenny. Yay. Not, oh, Zoltan has a really, really good point. What's because that? of the data protection oh, yeah. changes, all the profiles oh, on Kickstarter got yeah, made yeah. private. They, they defaulted them all to private instead of defaulting them to public. So that may be it. That's brilliant, Zoltan. Yes, that's probably it. Man. So if you want to appear, well, yeah. You if you're listening now and you're about you're to back the now, game, you have to make, unback, make your profile <laughs> public and then back it, um, so that we can enjoy sense. it. That doesn't make, yeah. That um, that's what it will be. Yes, um, that's it. Yeah. Thomas asks, will we see more plastic tokens? Well, you're not going to see them right now today, unfortunately. We don't have them to show here. We're currently still Guess using what? the card ones. They've been but, hoarded. But have they? But the Paris studio. <laughs> Paris Studio. Ah. <laughs> so yes, you will get a chance to see the upgrades um, that were so amongst some of the first stretch goals that you guys blasted through in the first 48 hours. Actually, that, that, that gives me, that brings me to a good point. We're, we're doing all these lives and we've got guys in the, in the uh, comments section, 16, 18 hours a day. What happens when we stop? What happens when we end the campaign? What happens in two days time? Less than I when sleep, we run out. We sleep, sleep for a long well, time. Well, we, we, all, we all sleep for a good 24 hours but after that the the plan is that we do what we did with Joan of Arc we make sure that the comments are checked all the time so every day you'll see somebody from the team in the comments mm -hmm. that will deal with that 
We'll do an update every week. Can so we we'll do, can we do a what's can, can we do a you? If you put your pinky up, we can maybe do a you. <laughs> What's up Wednesday? <laughs> Go ahead, it's okay. I'm all right. He yeah. said, uh, yeah, so every week we will do a What's Up Wednesday, which is a kind of one of the latest stuff is that we, we've been doing. Oh, very warm. It's very warm. It's very warm that <laughs> you get I'm very tired. It's very warm. Um, but yeah, oh. so, so the point is, we're not going away. We're not going to leave you for a year and that's it. Someone yep. will just randomly turn up. So we'll, you'll see news every week. Oh. You'll see people in the comments. Ooh, my doing? chat, my chat's broken. Uh, broken. I also kind of don't want to read it because I don't know what happened. Um, oh, oh goodness. So yes, what's so, up Wednesday yeah. is probably one of the main things we want you guys to remember. Is every single Wednesday we're on like update one hundred and twelve or twenty six like or something for Junior Bark. Um, we will continue the the constant level of communication. So every Wednesday you'll have an update that will start to encompass a little bit of Junior Bark, a little bit of Solomon Keen, a little bit of what's going on with us as a company as well. But yeah, I mean, as, as obviously to start with, we haven't got any finished stuff to show you. We've shown you pretty much everything. So. As we go along, we'll have more things. We'll have test packs from the factory. We'll have samples. We'll have all sorts of cool stuff as the process goes along. And we'll just show you these in each week, keep you up to date. Oh, the box art is out. The box art is cool, out. Isn't it? Look down, guys. Look at the next yeah. stretch goal. When we hit a million, look at Kane's arsenal. The, oh, the guns. Guns, man. Guns, guns, just guns. there. At, what do you see? So, Jack, as I said, Jack will be doing the update later on this evening once we finish up with the live. And you'll get to see even more images of that. I can't guns. wait. Um, I just, I think my chat has broken. Chat has You've broken. broken your chat. Let's again. see if we have Let's any more questions. More questions. Um, Alibatar said, "Will it be possible to upload upload our own scenarios to your website?" Love the game. Great work, guys. Uh, we we are we we have talked about making available the templates, and I think um, that is something we would love to do. Um, I think. It's something that with the community and with Jonah Rack as well, we're very much about engaging uh, with that on the Discord with a very active community of painters, as Harlot uh, mentions there, but also people who are into making custom stuff and taking what we've shown and putting it in things like Tabletop Simulator, for example, just to mention. Um, so yes, we're very big in supporting the community. What shape that will take is hard to tell at the moment because we're looking at That's over 2,000 cards. Um, we've, yeah, we've also just we've just been revamping our website, so exactly how all yeah. of this fits together, we're not quite sure yet. But we're we're doing stuff in this kind of neck of the woods mm -hmm. with Joan of Arc, so yep. that will basically road test the possibilities, and we'll come up with something from there. Yeah, we're going to have ten downloadable. If I think the Ben can keep me right, but ten downloadable scenarios for Joan of Arc that we'll be adding to our website. It was, we just launched our website just before the start of the Solomon campaign, so just about a month ago, and at least ten. Thanks, Ben. At least ten downloadable scenarios for Joan of Arc, um, in excess to everything that will be printed and sent to you guys. So. We're going to have a download section, and where we go with that will be steered by your feedback in the community and how you guys want to interact yeah. with it as well. What what people like? Yeah. Um, do do do. It's had Norbert said uh, no no. Have we already asked that? No, already asked that one. Uh, Rune says just to be clear, if I just get the core game, will everything fit into one neat and tidy box? No. You're going to get another box. We're going to give because you another box. Because the other boxes, well, there's so much stuff in stretch goals that all comes with it. That's what the new box that a million is for. So just the, the core box, the core box. just the core pledge will actually get you two, two big boxes. Two huge boxes full of stuff. Because of everything we unlocked. Because of all the stuff that's in the stretch goals. Um, Jamie says, hi both. Hi Hello. Jamie. Hi Jamie. Uh, just to confirm, the whole game is five player, right? Good question. I'll get the virtues here. Oh yeah, five, uh, the, if, you play, if you play Darkness, um, then you can play any of the, any of the scenarios, yes. any, of the, any of the adventures with Darkness. So in essence, what we're saying is if you're playing fully cooperatively, oh, there's Courage, couldn't find her. If you're playing fully cooperatively, it is one to four players. So if you're playing as the Virtues, you can play with one, two, three, or four. Cooperating is a bit weird. But yeah, well, yes. You can um, play solo. Solo's fine. And you'll be working against a Darkness deck. This is, your, this is what controls your stories, your actions, your chapters, how the evil's going to get you. But if you're playing five players, there is a fifth. You said the word anti-virtue, which yeah, is a kind pretty... Of, she's kind of an anti-virtue, yeah. yeah. But now, unfortunately, I don't have a mini for because darkness here. Because they're French, are holding them all. Damn, that's French. Damn them. Leo, they're, send they're, us they're, more they're minis. They're good at football, but they're also good at hoarding. Send us minis. Um, so the idea is that if you play with five players, which you can do with any of the game at all, the entire game can be played solo, cooperative, or 
competitive. Yep. There's no the there's no separate solo scenarios. You just play the same scenarios. Yep. There's no separate um, you know five player scenarios. It's just all of it yep. works for everything yep. in any of the various modes. Um, two different two solos, co-op and anti. I know, Fre Freddy. You are right. Providence is specifically a separate, unique solo mode. Yes. So not using any of the, the core four cardinal virtues, but having the fifth unique Providence who will play in her own way. Two solo modes. Two different solo modes. Raising my pledge then. <laughs> two, two different solo modes. Thanks, yeah. Jamie. We're very, very glad that you want to raise your pledge. So we have... Mark said, are you planning one or more painting videos? I'll tell you right now, straight off, we have nothing currently planned for, however, um, you might have seen this week, actually, if you're a big Facebook user, we had, I think, three or four different minis got sent out to some very amazing painters. Darkness got painted by Remy. Uh, we had um, Musket African uh, Solomon got painted right. and just released today as well. Oh, um, there's also oh, there's something else too. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're starting to kind of build those relationships, chat to painters a bit more outside of the ones that were already kind of close with like Seb Levine and Fabrice Tran um, and my hope would be that yes we would get some of these out to people so they can make their own content and share it with the communities directly and then we can do that because for us um, recording a painting video is, is is nice but we'd rather give it to the guys that know what they're doing well, yeah, let them share it's it. Not, it's not a really our, our core expertise. You don't want to see me painting a virtue that's just horrendous you, you're not going to you're not going to enjoy that. See me painting the Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, <laughs> I would not. Um, so yes, if you want to see how these kind of guys were painted, we will have that kind of content in the future, and we will share it through our communities. But I don't think it's something that we, as a company, will be doing no, directly. It's not, it's, yeah, I said it's not. We don't. We don't have anybody here that's. Um, oh, that's Ben, shush your What's naughty you mouth. <laughs> What's he doing there? As painting tour. Oh, right. New one million stretch goal. Oh, scratch. my God. <laughs> that would be amazing. Maybe that's a two million stretch goal. <laughs> I would do it. If we, if we somehow need more stretch goals, somehow, um, I, I could put that one as a stretch goal. Can, I, I would do can. it live, though, so you can see the beads of sweat on this side and the, 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 the anger slash tension temple pumping on this <laughs> side and my eyes squinting in live, unedited fashion. I think it would probably be... Uh, does that include the as mini? Oh, Freddie, the dream is real. The dream is real for the as mini. I can't remember if I was riding the what snake. Mean? What does that mean? What, the dream is real? <laughs> well, because we want to make the dream real, man. I can't remember if I was riding the snake while eating the sandwich inside the barrel last time or if it was the snake riding the barrel while I was in the barrel eating a the sandwich. I think me barrel. eating the sandwich is always constant. Snake riding as well the barrel eats the sandwich. That's one that has not yet been <laughs> proposed, yeah? Hello Brad, you're in, very welcome. Look, thank you so much for joining us here. Everyone who's joining us, you're in a good, good place. We are rocketing up, up to 6,082 backers. Welcome the 72 backers that have joined that unfortunately Kickstarter is not letting us welcome you the way it's, we'd like to. It's, yeah, it's because of the, I think Zoltan was right. I think it's exactly that. Yep. It's the privacy, everyone's default yep. on privacy. If you're just about to hit the back now button, set yourself to public in the settings and then hit back nice <laughs> so we can then join we, it then we can say hello um, any more questions let's see let's have a little flick through and see has anyone asked anything new I think we've answered all the questions alright guys if you have any more questions pop them into the chat now we'll try and answer a few more before we finish up this evening as many eating cheese my god that sounds amazing cheese sandwich obviously uh, oh he's done cheese it sandwich. he's only gone and gone full obviously. circle uh, <laughs> I don't we like cheese sandwiches though. It'd be more ham and cheese. Cheese is a bit snake and cheese. Sna oh as man! In a barrel. As eating a snake and cheese sandwich. That's it. Cheese and snake. Frank is with you. Frank is right. He, same time as you. He had it too. Yes. Right. I'll get right onto the sculptors because they have nothing better to do than to sculpt yeah, I mean, me. Yeah. You know, they're just sitting around <laughs> twiddling their fingers and. Um, Wishing they could think of such awesome things to make. With snake boots. Guys, this is great. This is gold. As with coconuts with snake boots, coconut cheese, drinking <laughs> beer from the barrel. This is, there's, there's things. Ha I, I just want to get the cards out there for you guys to make your own scenarios and own adventures so I you can know, be in them now. You know, you know how <laughs> you know much gonna cheese happen. and coconuts is going to be in these, yeah. <laughs> these scenarios. Um, so I'll do another shout out just before we, we wrap up. So in just, well, we're going to finish in 48 hours. 
just under 48 hours. So Thursday we'll wrap up. We'll have a live tomorrow night no, with no, Leo. No, no. The Kickstarter is going oh, yeah. to finish in 48 hours. We're we not. are not going to finish I am. this video. I am going to finish. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to physically cease uh, being. <laughs> Um, what else is going to happen in just over a week and a half, so in 11 days, on the 14th of July, we have a Warbore event in London. We're taking over the Warbore gaming store and we're going to be there for 9, 10 hours with Leo, myself, Jack, a bunch of the game dev team, demoing the games, having some fun and we'll also have a presentation where we're going to talk about coconuts. So we are. We're going to talk about coconuts. And how they are not fruit. Yeah. Um, where are they? <laughs> No, they're um, not. They're not nuts. They are fruit. Leo is yeah. sending messages about the World Cup. Leo. Apparently, he says, did you realise the best scorer in the World Cup has six goals? And do you know his name? He's English. His first name's Harry, and his surname, Kian. <laughs> Leo, you terrible, terrible, terrible person. Even when you're not live, you're making me cringe with your terrible, terrible jokes. Another thing we have coming up is we will be at Gen Con. If you're in the States and you can't make it over for one of our events here, we'll be at Gen Con uh, for the whole four days. I'm going to die from heat. Yeah, yeah. Four, uh, the whole four days, we will be at Gen Con. Come and visit us. The stand number does not come to my mind right now, unfortunately. I don't know if Ben knows it at the <laughs> top of his head. But, but yes, we'll be ben, there. On, the stand we'll be sharing loads of details about that um, um, on Facebook on, so you can find us. <laughs> Per Ben, I'm sorry Ben, I don't know, this, we'll, we'll be at Gen Con, you'll find us. It's not like Gen Con's massive. Josh, it'll be awesome to see you buddy, come and give me a great big man hug, no matter how sweaty I am, I'll be sweaty. Yeah, it's not like there's, there's not another 8,000 million people there. So. <laughs> um, what else, on the 8th of September in the south of France, we have Mythic Day, there are only 100 tickets, oh, yeah. I believe oh, yeah. over two thirds, of, two thirds of them have been sold. It's about 40 minutes north of Marseille, so it's of the south coast of France. If you're interested, head over to mythicgames.net. You can find the information on there about how to get involved. It's going to be an amazing event. The entire Mythic Games team are going to be there. And we're all going. We're going to have our first official Mythic Games uh, Joan of Arc tournament. First official one. Um, with 32 players going at it, hammer and tong, with the first production, full production copies of Joan of Arc, which will be amazing. We will also have demos of Solomon Cain, of course, and, and the latest um, adventures for that, plus demos of Operation Coconut. Was the word operation <laughs> too much? Too much? Too much? Don't tell anybody. I want to see if anyone even picked up on it. No, nah, they'll never pick up. Our, back, our backers don't they'll never catch details. They'll, they'll never notice that. Never notice that. They'll never notice that. They'll never, ever. Like <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right, well, we're going to get out of here. Uh, we're going to wrap. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie Ray. Love you. Any more questions before we go? Let's finish off. I don't think so. I think that's us. I think we've done them. Mark, we, we should Meg. No, we've seen that one. See one. Is soloing as providence? If soloing as providence, do the other virtues still interplay via setup and during the game? Can't it be played if, solo is pro if soloing as providence, do the other virtues still appear? Nope. 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 Providence is separate from the other four. You either have the, the four of them or you have providence, not the bear. Um, one final thing I just remembered actually if you've watched the playthrough that's on the main Kickstarter page, there's a question on the update that went out earlier today um, that said, What's your opinion on the rule? If you're playing with less than four players, if you're playing with two or three players, and one of the virtues is not in play, but you still have their deck to use their cards, when that virtue comes into play, should their aura be in effect? We talked about it during the playthrough. We discussed it. We had a little chat back and forth, and we threw the question out to you. Do you think the aura of the non-played virtue should be in effect when on the board, or should it not because there isn't a player playing as them? In your opinion, yes, no, use the aura. Uh, yes. Pop your comments on the update. Do you say yes? Yes, I yeah. say yes. Yes, yes, says Stefan. I was just asking the questions about the thing through Hunter. The virtues there. Yeah. I already answered yes, yes. Oh, they're saying yes. Noticeably yes. Agree with Jack? I would, I would say yes. But the, just the disagreeing with there. Jack is so much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Jack makes a very clear statement, and I think it's a very good one. I would get, it would get confusing having exceptions to common rules. Great game design. One of, one of the reasons why I would say yes. 
Okay, cool. Well, look, we're going to wrap it up there. Look, thank you so much, everyone thank that you. joined. We are very much nearing 6,100 backers. So welcome to every single person that's backed us in the last 40 hours. It's going to be an awesome, awesome ride. Um, Jake, you're going to home to write an update. I'm, I'm going, going to home to write an update, if not two by the time I get home. Yep, yep. Let's hit that million. Let's hit that million, guys. We really want to do it. Let's get that stretch goal unlocked and then let's get back to finishing off the Haunted Mountain uh, story and get that added into the core box as well. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Absolutely. Right. Goodbye. It's time for Az's outro music. Have you got something prepared for tonight? <laughs> If you, can't, if you haven't been here before, <laughs> does this tradition that we need? Uh, I've got I've got some I've got some Japanese samisen music stuck in my head, okay. which is completely okay. uh, unrenderable. They by did. Me did you know that after the video last time, they really did uh, read into the fact that you were doing the professionals theme tune, and they actually read into that as it might mean something about opera, uh, the coconut game. <laughs> uh, the live could, tomorrow will be actually, around the same usual I could time. I actually pretend that it did. No, don't. <laughs> right. Secret music as I nip away. Secret music. Oh, you're letting the side down. Nelly the elephant back the trunk and said goodbye to the circus. Off <laughs> she went with the trumpet. Trump, 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 trump. <laughs> <laughs>